what's up right on time julio ricardo varela what's happening look i already got a heart i already got a heart one heart in like 10 seconds julio ricardo varela it is uh it's the third week yes the third week of latino rebels radio live on facebook what's up everybody living in the land of quarantine uh i'm just gonna go straight at the the next person who's gonna come my way from h-town as they say houston dejas my man my og my brother from another mother <laughs> tony diaz what's up brother Hey, como estas, mano? Great to see you. I mean, to see you. <laughs> yeah, I know. You look great. Um, I wanted to bring you on because I haven't had anyone from Texas on. And we've been very, you know, it's like I, I, I had Alinda Segarra from um, New Orleans, but I haven't had anyone from Texas. So before we start, I, I have to say, first of all, how long have I known you? 10 years? 11 years? 11 years? Something like that. Algo así, mano. Yeah, and I was on Nuestra Palabra, right? Like, I remember early, yeah. back in the day. Way back. Back in the day, my no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've, I've known you forever. Like, we're really, like, we hang, we're, we're kind of become, like, I like to think, like, we're close. Like, we've had, like, we've broken tortillas, we've drank tequila, <laughs> you know, we've had margarita samplers, uh... <laughs> You've taken me in other cities, not just Houston, too. <laughs> yeah, in other cities, we had great deep dish in Chicago. I remember that because you're a Chicago guy. I remember, like, a, we went so children, we kind of roll. roll, right? So, I'm happy to see you. No, likewise, I want to know to get this started. You're in Houston, you know, what's how it is that how is it out there right now? Like, your family's okay, I'm, a, I'm everything's good, but. What, tell me about Houston first, and then we can talk about Texas a little bit and, and everything. But tell me about what's going on in Houston right now. with this Well, and, and you know what? Let, let's put it in context. You've mentioned, you know, uh, we're good buddies. We had a chance to hang out. I still remember, and it's a contrast. Remember we had a great meal. We shot the breeze. We shot the shit. You we were on the show. Tassels. We did this great we interview. Shot. I interviewed you in Houston last year yeah. about the new, like, right, the cultural revolution of Houston, right? I mean, exactly. It was a beautiful day outside. We were optimistic. <laughs> Things were booming. <laughs> um, was it just a year or 10 years ago, ago, though? Because, I mean, just so much has changed since that time. And I want to put it in that context because, I mean, even that, that restaurant that we were at, Cuchara, shout out to them. I think, I think even you mentioned it. Like, if people don't know Houston, right. they might be shocked that – that's such a cool, chill place. It's like uh, contemporary. It's still raza. It's very specific cuisine. It's in a multicultural polyglot neighborhood. Well, it's, they're suffering right now. Yeah. Oh, really? Cuchara suffering? So what, what's going on? So the Because that place was bopping. That place was... So for people that know what no Cuchara is, it's like Mexican... It's like a Mexico City... Exactly. Like cuisine. It's so I, good. What, so they're and, hurting. So what What happened? What, what's up with them? Very neighborhoody, very artsy. Uh, but then, of course, they had a shutdown on the fly. They tried creative ways to stay open. So they're still open. They've done very creative things, everything from a Loteria Day to they've had a parking lot concert where people can come in and park and get food. Um, but, of course, like Houston defines itself a lot through food. And this is, you know, um, a real... Uh, beacon for people traveling, but they're, they're all struggling. And I think on top of it too, downtown where all the restaurants have shuttered, there've been reports now where the crime has increased just because people, there's a certain segment of society struggling so much that they're breaking into restaurants downtown and pilfering anything that, you know, they can find, um, you know, in, in that section, um, you know, and that, and other people are struggling to keep, keep going um, and then I think I think that's what's up with Houston. There's different layers, you know. Yeah. Uh, you ask how I'm doing. I'm blessed, you know. Um, actually, I'm teaching classes online. I'm blessed that you know I've got a master's degree. I speak English all right. We're computer savvy because we're chatting on this right now. But I've been able to to transform teaching online. Uh, nuestra palabra. Yeah. You know, privilege. we're about to like get all kinds access. of yeah, privilege here. and access. Yeah. So you're you know. Palabra. What's yeah, up? Uh, we, were, we were about to lean in to, you know, a uh, higher operating budget. Uh, we were looking at a building and whatnot. That all stalled. And right now, I guess it worked out only because uh, tourism here has tanked. Uh, a lot of that tax money for tourism that goes, uh, they call it hotel occupancy tax. 
that's what they base arts funding on. It's bottomed out. So there have been reports from the arts uh, funders that everybody is going to get cut across the board. Uh, Houston First, which is all about tourism, they've laid off all types of people. Wow. Folks that have gotten individual artist grants, they're being told they're probably going to get a lot less, if anything, from there. Um, so, of course, the arts world is in a tailspin. Uh, so I, I guess I bring it up where it, it's kind of all these different levels of society where there's some people that are, you know, struggling really hard. Some people yeah. are getting by. Yeah. So what about the cases? What about the hospital? Like is Texas or Houston? I mean, are you guys just starting to feel like, like are people still kind of like, cause here's the problem. And I don't know what you're thinking because I, I haven't really talked, like I, I do talk to friends all over the country, but like for me, out here in Massachusetts, like the moment we locked down, there was shit happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like there wasn't shit happening. Like there's places in this country when there's maybe not a lot of shit happening, but things are locking down. And I think there's probably this feeling of like, oh, this isn't serious or anything, but I'm trying to say it's like, it's serious. I mean, I'm in a place, I live in a hot spot right now and I do have the privilege of being like South of Boston, but the stories I'm doing, reporting, it's bad out there, especially with like immigrant communities and POC communities. What about Tejas? What about, what, what, how's the feeling in Tejas? So, so here, here, here's one of the big issues. Um, of course, the, the president hasn't given a specific plan nationwide. So, he, you know, he keeps saying that we're at war. This looks like it's a state to state thing. And here's the issue with Texas. Um, you know, the counties are the big governmental structure that are local local governments. Right. So if the president's letting every state figure things out and then the um, the governor of Texas is letting every county, there's 250 counties in Texas. OK, so we've got 250 different plans uh, now. Now, right now, there's not a run on hospitals, thank goodness. But we're also second to last for testing. So there's this strange optimism where we're not seeing a lot of deaths. I think it's about 30 or 40 in Houston. Of course, that's bad for the families that are suffering that. Right. But it's not near the levels on, you know, in New York. Right. Uh, but so the there's. Point, but the point being, it's like New York used to be like that, like it, three three weeks ago, and. I guess my question, well, Houston is an example. I, I mean, I do think that the question about the counties is really good because there's a lot of power in those counties. But the point being is like, as Texas, is there this feeling because the governor, because of Trump, that people are like, oh, this ain't, this ain't that bad. And especially like you go like West Texas, like, oh, you, you know, Texas is expansive. It's only going to happen in, in the cities or uh, is something being missed, Tony? I mean, you guys talking about it? I, I think there's that tension because the, the the governor Abbott, who's the Republican governor of Texas, he wants to be the first state to reopen. And uh, the mayor of Houston, who's a Democrat, has pointed out we need testing. And, and, and let's bring it home to why elections really matter. You introduced me to uh, an upstart politician, Lena That's Hidalgo. Right. <laughs> Hidalgo, I met her at Harvard. I, I was doing a, a talk at Harvard Business School. And she was, this is a great story. It's like about a couple of years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And she was a panelist. And I'm like, oh, I'm Julia Calvarela. I'm a journalist. You know, I went, you know, I went undergrad here. And then she's like, hi, I'm, I'm Lina Hidalgo. I'm running for, a, I'm <laughs> running for judge of Harris County. I was like, Re I went like this. I literally did one of these. <laughs> what? Like, and then she's like, do you know anyone in Houston? And I'm like, um, I think I do. So, <laughs> so tell me about that. So I mean. So, so, you know, um, I got to meet her. She was brilliant. And, you know, at, at that time, it, it was almost unthinkable that, you know, and, that she would be able to, to defeat this incumbent, uh, Republican incumbent. And um, I say all this because she came like, dale ganas, you're in the right space, you've you got the great talent, and she kept pushing. She wins. Here's why it matters right now. Uh, as you can tell nationwide, there's this weird partisan response to if it's safe to return or not, right? right? Um, and at the statewide level for Texas, we've got a Republican governor who, in my opinion, seems to want to get in the good graces of the president because he wants to be the first out the gate to open up 
business again. Lina Hidalgo, who's Democrat, she's been leaning towards it's not time yet. And she was one of the first to close down the county. That was controversial. She got a lot of pushback. She, I think she saved a lot of lives. And then she's been working with closely with uh, Democratic Mayor Sylvester Turner. He won an election. His opponents, of course, you know, um, the mayoral elections are supposed to be nonpartisan, but <laughs> you know, they really weren't. Uh, but he, he's Democrat. So he's been actively keeping uh, you know, the quarantine going, supporting people, and also saying we can't open up till we have – we don't have the testing. We don't have the testing. We don't have the tracing. And exactly like you described, there's the tension. There's this odd optimism fueled by the president saying that we're going to open on, what, Easter, May 1st, et cetera, the governor wanting to live up to that. Right. But right. we don't have any science to say things are okay. So it's this odd – it's this odd tension – and I mean, I'll be real. I mean, people do need to work, too. So, you know, it, they're, they're, we're right caught in that middle section right now. Right. And are, and there were protests, too. Weren't there protests in Texas this weekend or uh, uh, that or, or not? That bandwagon with some protesters to go to the to the state. Hey, here, here's my thing. You know, we're freedom of speech and we protest. So, you know, what do, do it right. Do it legally. And. The irony is they weren't practicing social distancing. They didn't have masks on. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like I don't want to be right. I don't want them to get sick and die. You see what I'm saying? So it's like I don't like that the chaos at the national level is creating confusion and pitting community members against each other when we don't really know which way to go on this. Right. What about um, other parts of Texas or at least what you've been reading? I mean I know Houston is – um, you know, it's an immigrant town as well, like very me Mexicano, me Mexican American. Um, I think, like I said, it's the greatest Latino city nobody knows about. Um, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I'm seriously, Houston, Texas. For someone, I spent two summers in Sugarland. I've told you this. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, when I spent it in the '80s, when I came back to Houston and I started hanging out, hanging out with you, I was like, is this the same <laughs> city that I grew up as a teenager for two summers? No. <laughs> Um, fantastic city, Houston, seriously, just one of my favorite cities in America. But as you go down, right, as you go down towards the border or other parts or say like, you know, San Antonio or down mm -hmm. to go to Brownsville or McAllen, are you hearing anything or reading anything about what's going on in the border regions? And are it the well, same issues of poverty and, and, you know, is it impacting those communities at all? Well, how about this? I'll depress you, and then we'll we'll go towards uh, some slivers of hope. Okay? That's, uh, that's life. This is this is right. what you do to me. So go for it. <laughs> um, so in San Antonio, they were giving away uh, free food to folks who needed it. They had ten thousand people line up. Uh, likewise, here in Houston, any food bank, uh, Houston Penn School District, is trying to keep feeding the students who are counting on meals from schools. Um, when they open up, they get thousands of folk overrunning the, the facilities. Uh, so the, the, there's very real struggles. Um, here in Houston, they've quantified when they've been taking, um, when, when they take surveys and find out also by ethnicity who's being affected, it's blacks and Latinos who are being, effect, who are dying the most in the highest numbers. Uh, you've got zip code tracking that says, who's being most affected, who's getting sick, sicker, who's getting the sickest and who's dying from it. It's black and brown communities. And of course, you know, you and I know that it's the same problems that have been there all along. Um, are they documented? So do they feel safe going to the doctor on a regular basis? Right. They have access to food. There's food insecurity. Uh, you know, our community, if they're, if they're busy breaking their backs, they don't have the time or energy to let me go bougie on it, to join a gym to be healthy, to eat, to spend extra money to go to Whole Foods? Are they walking during, yeah, you know? I mean, it's, like even if you take some of the border towns and the colonias, and I, I think about like no running water, like parts of like Brownsville and McAllen and up and down, you know, the real, the RGV, the Rio Grande Valley. Um, it, it, so the same pattern is happening, right? You're exactly. Like what you're saying is, you know, New York immigrant communities here in Boston, I'm doing a piece for Latino USA next week about Chelsea, Massachusetts, which is like, 65% Latino and immigrant and is the epicenter of Massachusetts. So is it the same wow. type of, of, you know, division in, in Texas too now? Yeah, it, it, exactly. Exactly. But I think it, it's more pronounced just because the, 
the different sociological issues that put us in the high risk factor now are putting our lives, are accelerating the danger for the community. Uh, and then, of course, you know, same issues. There has a, uh, the national level has been sending information out about, um, you know, uh, information in Spanish. And again, what do you what do you translate it from all these different uh, different mediums that to come as it trickles down? So so that part that struggle is real. Right. However, I, I will say this. Uh, I'll say two things. One, you know, um, the raza is working though. So okay, I've taken I've taken to doing walks because the gym is closed. I don't know if they've been declared essential workers or if they haven't checked. There's still construction workers pounding nails. Wow. I'm passing talleres. The mechanics are still working. I don't know if the lawn guys are essential workers. I'm not asking, but they're working. You know, right and left, they are working. Additionally, here in Harris County, and I think this kind of bring, brings it full circle. We mentioned Lina Hidalgo. Um, one year ago, she uh, she made it a practice. When she gives a press conference, she'll give the press conference, obviously, in English, in Ivy League, Latina English. Yeah, she's so freaking smart, dude. <laughs> right? <laughs> but then she will stop and deliver it in Spanish. Wow. One year ago, a county commissioner from Chambers County. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Said, we're in America. Why are you giving it in Spanish? Okay, so... We're not talking, you know, in 1920. This was one year ago. There was a lot of pushback. You hit it. You know, I hit it. We hit a radio, TV, print, you know. Right. And then he, he took it back. Okay. I bring that up now because now when when Harris County Judge Lina Hidalgo What's gives a daily yeah. update in English, she busts loose in Spanish and it's just standard now. Okay, so it's, it's standard, and and the communication could be that you know it just becomes something that at least communities in Houston who are Spanish speaking at least know that they're going to get information, and that helps, right? It exactly, but it also, but then also, it really means that these elections matter. And I know there was a lot of talk about uh, you know when you had uh, Bernie and Biden down to that last uh, you know <laughs> those last few races. There was talk about you gotta if have Bernie to do that. Is gonna hurt the down ballot. <laughs> yeah, but Bernie, I mean, Bernie took all the, all the, you know, all the frontera. So, you right. know. It, you know, it, it, exactly. And it's like, well, okay, so if that was the case, Biden's the candidate now, the down ballot's been abandoned. You know, it's like uh, Bloomberg supposedly was coming to Texas and hiring people through November. All the folks he hired in Texas, and supposedly he hired like almost 100 or 200 folks. Right. They right. all got laid off, right? right? So they're not here on the ground anymore. Uh, the Tom Steyer camp, too, they said they were going to invest and keep people on the ground in November. He hired Latinx folks. Some were from Texas. They are not working anymore. You know, so, so again, it's kind of like. We can see with our own eyes that elections matter. Right. We've had some victories. We got to fight from, but we cannot rest on that because you know, as you saw in Wisconsin, there seem to be certain powers that be. They're going to make it harder for our communities to vote, and we need that support now more than ever. Yeah. Life or death. Now. Yeah. So talk to me. You, you mentioned Cuchara, which we love. I, I'm I'm kind of sad. Um, yeah. That you know that restaurant was. <laughs> I love that place. Um, but what other like economic impacts that you know you were talking about cultural organizations, arts organizations, uh, but what other impacts in Houston are you seeing that uh, people should be made aware of? Sure. Well, the arts community is in a tailspin, uh, and uh, that's across the board. Uh, so, for example, the Alley Theater, we worked with them closely to support a play, uh, Quixote Nuevo. That was wonderful. R happened right before... Uh, the COVID crisis. Luis from Sesame Street. Exactly. Which, <laughs> if you want to see my new Facebook banner, you see my new <laughs> Facebook banner. You saw, right? There's a picture awesome. of me on the set of Sesame Street with my buddy Carmine, and to my right is Luis. And I was like six, seven years old, and I was visiting. <laughs> so anyway, um, continue. I just had to say so that, that because like that was wonderful. Again, like Houston was on this this upswing. Uh, Alley Theater had a furlough staff. They've given pay cuts for whoever could hang in there. They canceled their entire season. And if, you know, a larger arts group like 
the LA theater is suffering. You know the Latino arts community is in a tailspin. Uh, Talento Bellini with Houston, which is city-owned, it's been yeah. closed down. Uh, it was actually, we, we worked to keep it open last year, and then Mecca, Multicultural Education Council for the Arts, they were working, they, they basically helped cover the building. They don't, you know, Mecca's closed down now. All arts funding is dried up. Uh, Nuestra Palabra, Latino writers having their say, we canceled our, this is our 22nd anniversary. Happy birthday. Thank you. That's why you're calling, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was calling to see a friend, but yeah, 22 years. Too. I mean, you, you, but here's my thing is, are you guys as a community trying to do something to help? Or, or is it like, at least in the arts, are you? Are there anything or is everyone just kind of like, what do we do? Well, I'll be honest. Right now we're all on survival tactics. So right now has been uh, cut the bleeding. So even with Nuestra Palabra, we have shut down, broken down. We had small infrastructure, went as small as possible. Right now, most groups and most artists, because there's no funding, it's how do we go to different platforms. So right now you see a lot of that happening. Um, the Dedo Project is about to do a reading. We've got our radio shows back online remotely. Actually, it's interesting. I'm glad we're touching bases this week because we're kind of coming out of that first uh, crash. Yeah. You know, and we are looking out right now. Um, probably we'll be convening next week to see how we're going to support each other. But I do want to say this. Here's the problem, though. Um, I think a lot of the Latino arts community never recovered from Harvey. So even Mecca, they oh, saw. Yeah. So this is like it's like Puerto Rico. It's like Harvey exactly. happens. You start coming back. And now, boom. I, Exactamente. Yeah. And one quick example, like Mecca, Multicultural Education for the Arts, they took a hard hit. And they're, they're one of the few buildings that are Latino-owned for Latino art. They took a big hit. They only got support this last year from the Harvey Qatar Fund, okay? A foreign country had to, <laughs> had to help them, okay? Wow. They got the help. Um, and they haven't even started really construction yet. And now... You know this this hits. Um, yeah. So exactly, it's like you you know you you made the allusion the the um, metaphor to Puerto Rico. It's very similar. It's the same thing. Yeah, Harvey. Yeah, I didn't think about that. So Tony. So besides trying to go to Nuestra Palabra, you're doing your Fox. Are you're teaching online? Like, what what do you tell people? Like, you know, as what do you tell Houston? Like, as your final words of Houston? You know what? What's going through you? Or even Texas. I mean, it feels like, like I said, it just feels weird. You're, the tension that you're saying is, is. I really hope it doesn't hit Texas like it's hitting other parts of this country. But at the same time, I do worry if Texas is ready or not, at least in certain parts of it. So what do you say? What are your final words? Well, one, it's great to hear the message from you that, that you know, the East Coast was sitting where we're at, where it seemed like it was just double digits. So we need to stay alert and I think right now, you know, we got to basically, for our community, you know, uncertain future, low resources, upheavals, this is where we usually are, right? So I think for us, the key is to unite, to survive, but then keep our eye on getting past this so that we can unite to thrive on the other side of that. And then stay with these, stay in touch with all these networks. And, and really, we got to count on intelligentsia, art, cultura, networks even more than a familia, more than ever. Yeah, Tony Diaz, I just want to thank you so much for being the guy. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so so that is Tony uh, Diaz. It's all good. Uh, it's I, you know, I. Uh, hey, thanks, mom. My mom said it was a good show. So uh, I got a couple of comments here. Let's see if I can add them. As the process allowed for the virus to spread, increase the number of confirmed cases. It's too early to tell, Alejandra. But, you know, protesters not practicing social distancing. If you are in, you know, science can tell you that if you are in a crowd and no one's practicing social distancing, who knows ha who has it? Who knows who has it? So, uh you know, one of the things I did want to share, and it kind of gets into this, uh, let me just share some of the content that we've gotten on Latino Rebels uh, today. Uh, one of the things, and I, I think people have seen this, or I don't know if people have seen this, uh, but we posted a, a, a cartoon from two of uh, Puerto Rican artists. 
who do Pepito, and they did this, uh, and they do satire. And I think it was on Facebook. It's, I think it's still on Facebook, and I still think it's on uh, Twitter. But it got removed from Instagram today. Uh, and I'm just curious. Uh, you know, one of those things, we kind of got trolled a little bit for this. Uh, Want to see what people think. Uh, the artists actually, if you go to the site, the artists um, actually are they wrote a comment they commented about it so if you want to read about why they were disappointed that instagram dropped uh this piece of uh political art um just letting you know it's something to uh, you should check out the other one i want to call attention to guys is uh we wrote a we published a piece out of uh about ecuador and really, really, really uh, fantastic piece about the situation in Ecuador that I want people to be aware of. There's reports of you know bodies on the streets in Latin America and in, in Guaya in um, parts of Ecuador, not in Latin America. But uh, this comes at the same time that um, out of Puerto Rico, at the Center for Investigative Journalism. And this is another story that we we published uh, on Saturday that they got their math wrong. They actually duplicated the report of tests. And his excuse was, Secretary of Health's excuse was, well, no one seems to get it right. Um, no one seems to get it right. So, um, so that happened in Puerto Rico. Let me go back to this one. Uh, really quick because I do want to put the, the comment from Christian. It struck a nerve. That's why they took it down. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it struck a nerve. And uh, so Christian uh, Enriquez, who is OG, OG uh, Latino Rebels, is uh, commenting tonight. Thanks, Christian. And then finally, uh, not to stick on Puerto Rico, but there is another great piece by, um, by a top, by a Puerto Rican scientist, by Monica who wrote this really fantastic piece about Puerto Rico and missing on a lot of this data collection and just really good work. Uh, very proud of the work that we've been doing on Latino Rebels. Um, just so you know, we do have a COVID-19 section where we're pretty much covering COVID-19 in Latin America, um, U.S. Latino communities. I don't know if you guys saw this one. Uh, president of brazil was at a military celebration <laughs> it's like i get really nervous when presidents go to places that celebrate the military and you can see here is the president of brazil in a crowd and brazil's actually suffering from coronavirus uh there's another piece uh that happened after this one in in the amazon city of manaus which came out today. So you have the president of Brazil like walking around with a mask and then the images that are happening in the city of, um, in this city, in the Amazon, is just, it's heartbreaking what's going on. So there's a lot of content that we have on our site, uh, Associated Press, our own reporting, um, just heartbreaking. You know, things that are happening in Latin America, I know you guys follow it. It's it's just as important. So I just want to thank Tony again for for being on, uh, thinking about Texas and Houston and and everything about there. I love I love Texas. Anyone watching right now from Texas? Because if you are, comment now so I can put it on. If you're from Texas, I just wait a second or two, uh, but I'll get you on before the show ends. Uh, it's Texas is a special place to me. Just fantastic. Houston, uh, Austin, San Antonio, El Paso, the Rio Grande Valley, uh, parts of Dallas, out in West Texas. Just a really special place in a lot of ways. And seeing it, there we go. I am adding Susanna, Houston representing. Thank you for doing that. I spent two summers in Sugarland. I don't know if that counts for me being a Texan, but I am. I just spend, and if we would have stayed in Texas, I probably would have went to UT Austin. So there, but we didn't. Uh, but anyway, catch all the the reporting on Latino rebels. Oh, let me add David too. Another one from Houston. 
David Contreras, thank you so much. Uh, I'm a I love Texas. I love Houston. I love I love so many people in Texas, and I'm thinking about you guys. I do hope that you don't suffer as much as the East Coast, but I hope that your leaders are actually putting health, public safety first over anything else. Um, and if not, take it into your own hands and and just stay safe, everybody. Stay safe. Listen, rest of the week, if you're a fan, we got Tony Hernandez of the Immigrant Archive Project out of Miami uh, uh, tomorrow. We have Julissa Arce, a fabulous just author, ad activist. She's coming on Wednesday. And then if you're a fan of Ile, who, you know, she formed Calle 13, uh, she's part of Calle 13, but now she's she's gone solo. We're going to have Ile on, on Thursday. So there. How's that? So thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll see you on Tuesday. Stay safe, everybody. Peace. Ah!